I came across this video about 12 years ago now, when I was maybe longer, maybe like 14 years ago, um, when I was leaving Buffalo to go to, to move to Pittsburgh, basically, before I ultimately uh, moved down to the Philadelphia area. This is Richard Makowitz. He is a Navy SEAL uh, in SEAL teams. He's been there. He's done that. Um, then he launched a, a very successful uh, coaching, public speaking, motivational speaking career and hosted uh, some shows on like the Discovery Channel. I think it was called Future Weapons. I believe he passed away a couple years ago. Uh, but either way, I came across this you know, 12, 14 years ago in Buffalo, going through a tough time in life, needed to hear this, was exposed to Richard Makowitz um, on the Jim Rome show, by the way. I used to be a huge Jim Rome show fan, um, or a huge Jim Rome fan. But uh, th this is an extremely motivational speech that he gave to the Oakland, back then, the Oakland Raiders, um, just about the importance of team and being reliable and not quitting on the people who are relying on you the most in life. Um, it's a very powerful message for me now as a father, um, you know, who's fighting for, for his children. Um, it's, a, it's a powerful message, and it just reminds you that there's, there's no quit option when it comes to this. There's no quit option. You know, Richard has a saying, he has a mantra, that um, it's uh, not dead, can't quit. If you're not dead, you can't quit. There's no excuses. You know, what are you going to do? You know, on days when it's tough to get out of bed, on days when things seem, uh, you know, pointless, first you want to pray um, and be thankful for the gifts of life. Uh, but secondly, you just, you, you got to try to put things into perspective as best you can and make the most out of those tough days and realize that, you know, this too shall pass and, and brighter days are on the horizon. Without further ado, Richard Makowitz. Hey guys, thank you guys, appreciate that. Thank you so much, I appreciate that a lot. Uh, my name is Richard Makowitz. I am a former 10-year veteran of the Navy, U.S. Navy SEAL teams. Uh, while in SEAL team, I was a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor, a sniper instructor. I taught land, mountain Arctic warfare. And uh, if I was you guys sitting in your chairs right now, I'd probably ask me, what the fuck does this guy know about football? Okay, all right. The truth is, you guys have probably forgot more about football than I'll ever know. But what I do know about, okay, what I do know about is performing under extreme stress and pressure. I do know what it's like to have teammates count on me with their very lives. I know what it's like to perform in environments where you're facing doubt, second guessing, hesitation, the unknown. I know what it's like to focus and perform in an environment where you're under a tremendous amount of fear and you have to hit a target because people are counting on you to do so. That's something I would like to speak to you guys about. That's something I know intimately and that's something I'd like to share with you guys today. Okay. Before I begin though, I want to take a second to I want to take a second to acknowledge you. Is it easier just for me to take this thing away? Can you guys hear me? Yes? All right, I don't need this. Okay. Can somebody take this, please? Thank you, brother. All right. What I want to do is make this real simple. Okay, I want to acknowledge you guys. You guys are all professionals. You guys all know what the hell you're doing. You busted your asses to get here in the NFL. You're playing at the most elite level for a football player. Okay, so I want to recognize you guys for doing that, first and foremost. Okay? I want to appreciate your time you're going to give me over the next, I don't know, 10 minutes. But before I begin, okay, I want to make sure that I ask for your permission to really do a good job with you, to give you something in that 10 minutes. Okay? But I want to make sure the whole team's on board for that so I don't waste your time and I don't waste mine. So what I'm going to do is make it very simple. If you could show me by raising your hand whether you want to listen to me for 10 minutes, please do so. Thank you guys. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Okay? Really, what I'm going to talk about a little bit just to start off is getting into SEAL Team. What it was like to go in and get into SEAL Team. Ultimately, their job is to basically get two things out of a guy. A man who will not quit no matter what. Okay? When ships are down, when that guy is pushed against the wall, when he has to go for six days straight, he has to perform without food or water, he has to go 14 days in the field in Arctic temperatures, he will not quit. He will not drop the ball when people want him to fucking show up. That's the first thing they look for. 
The second thing they look for is a man who can put his bullshit aside, his ego, long enough to show up for his guys when they really need him. Now that has nothing to do with whether I like that guy or not. It has everything to do with what I put my shit aside for the betterment of the team, that the team can accomplish anything if I'm on board. That's the only two things they're looking for. You don't quit, and you show up for the team. In SEAL Team, what's really important is I want to make this distinction. No man has ever been left behind. Shot, killed. No man has ever been left behind. Our job is, if the guy is dead, my job with the team is to go in and get his ass out. That's how much he means to me as a teammate. That is my stand. That is what I stand for as a U.S. Navy SEAL team. It's not SEAL 1, SEAL 2. It is SEAL Team 1, SEAL Team 2. Does that make sense? Guys, I need some heads to move up and down. I'm not a television, OK? All right, I, no, I don't drool off the side of your face. I need you to interact. Does that make sense? Yeah. Am I bullshitting you so far? OK. So the simple thing is they wanted to hone men into that caliber. They were willing to push us. They were willing to drive us. They were willing to challenge us to that extreme. Okay? They wanted to see what we were made of. So I was told, you know, I mean, I, at the time, I was six foot, 150 pounds. Okay? I was told by everybody I was too small. I was too scrawny. I wasn't big enough. There was no way I could do it. A guy bet $100,000 that I wouldn't make it. I can't find the guy, but he bet $100,000 I wouldn't make it. Everybody thought I couldn't do it. Okay? So let me get something straight here. I felt I needed to get an edge, something that would help me out, something that I could rely on when I was freezing my ass off in that water, when they were humping me around carrying giant telephone poles, when they were busting my ass, when they wanted me to quit, when they were trying to find out what kind of man I'm going to be. Okay? I needed an edge. I was fortunate. I was very fortunate that a guy, a friend of mine, had a brother who had already made it in the SEAL team. He sent me a picture. It's a silly picture. It had guys jumping out of a helicopter with a little rubber duck, a boat. Okay? But it looked cool. They were in camis. They were all sharp. They looked good. And I was like, man, that's what I want to do. Okay? But what was more important was written on the back of that, that picture. It said, a man can only be beaten in two ways. If he gives up or he dies. A man can only be beaten in two ways, if he gives up or he dies. I thought that was so profound. I thought that was so spot on. But under extreme stress and pressure, that's a pretty long sentence to remember. So what I went down and I shortened it to not dead, can't quit. That meant as long as I had a thought, I was in the game, I was alive, I still had a chance. I wouldn't quit. As long as I had a single pulse in my body, I was still alive. I had a chance. I wouldn't quit. My teammates could count on me like that. I could count on me like that. See, what, what is quitting? This is really important on team. This is really important to team. But what is quitting? To quit means to give up. To give up on what? To give up on your dream. To give up on what you set as a target for you to hit. To give up on your goal. It means to surrender. I hate that word, surrender. OK? To surrender on what? You being everything you're capable of being when confronted with a challenge. Listen. What really makes a man is how he shows up when the chips are down when he's fatigued, when everything looks like it's going against him, how he shows up, that is what a man is all about. It is not what car you drive. It ain't what house you live in. It ain't what your friggin' shirt is. It ain't what, it ain't how much money you make. It's how you show up when people need you most. That's what makes you a man. When your family, when your teammates, when they need you most, that's what it's all about. But see, I want you to recognize something, the quitting conversation, okay? It's not as obvious as some people think. It's a very subtle conversation, quitting. It starts off like this in SEAL Team. Oh, 
Oh man, this is bullshit. Yeah? Think I gotta break ice? I had to ski in minus 65 degrees below zero weather to get to a place where I gotta break the ice to get in the ocean and then dive on a submarine and drop a bomb off on it. You can, I can't tell you right now when I'm getting there, I'm telling you it's freezing cold. I'd much rather be at home in a bed with somebody, a female, okay, all right, drinking something, chilling out and having a nice night. But that's not what I chose. I chose to be a U.S. Navy SEAL. Just like, oh, I just want to stop for a second. Is there anyone here that had a gun put to your head to get to this camp? Anyone? Please raise your hand if you actually had a gun. Listen, we'll send a bunch of my friends. We'll come in and we'll rescue you. Okay? Is there anybody that had a gun pointed to your head to do this job? You chose this. You chose to do this. Okay? That's a really important thing to remember. Especially when that quitting conversation starts to show up. It shows up when? You're fatigued. It shows up when? You've got, you're pissed off. Quitting is, a, quitting is a conversation that is insidious. It'll lead at you. And it is an extremely reasonable conversation. It makes complete sense to quit. Think about it. SEAL Team's basic job was always impossible, right? My job was what? To jump out of a perfectly good airplane to fall into the ocean, okay, get in the ocean and swim seven miles with a pack. Then I put that pack on my back, I hump through the desert or the jungle for 20 miles to get to a place where some motherfucker wants to shoot me. Well, that's stupid, right? Oh, and I forgot, I got paid $24,000 a year for this job. For some of you, that's a watch. Okay. All right. But I love that job. I love that job. I always felt like a man after finishing that job. To go through adversity, to face those challenges, to move through all that molasses, that drag parachute of doubt and second guessing, that drag parachute of that quitting conversation, that insidious conversation that tries to diminish you and what you're capable of being. That is when I felt the most complete as a man, when I challenged myself. Not dead, can't quit. Not dead, can't quit. It's just that simple. People want to make it more complicated. Listen, if you ever hear one of your teammates talking about blaming somebody, the coach this, the coach that, my teammates are this, the, the environment's like that, the league is like this, now, let me tell you right now, that is the beginning of a conversation called quitting. Quitting on yourself, quitting on your teammates. Okay? That's where it comes from. It's a very simple conversation, but it sounds completely reasonable at the time, and you can get a bunch of people to agree with you. Okay? Accomplishing your mission, hitting your target no matter what, that is completely unreasonable. It goes against logic. It goes against odds. It goes against reason. You said you were going to do it, therefore, no matter what, you will do it. No matter what. See? Hitting your target, working together as a team, that's all about being unreasonable. Not finding an excuse not to be part of a team. Not finding an excuse not to accomplish your objective. That's the truth. It's just that simple. So. I want to speak one quick second more about team. All right? People say there's no I in team, okay? But guess what? Is there anybody here that doesn't want to be the man when somebody points the finger and say, you know what? I can do it. You can count on me. You can count on me. If you need something to do, you need the impossible done, that's what I thought about in SEAL Team. That's why I became a sniper. That's why I went into all these things. That's why I taught hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's why I taught land mountain Arctic warfare. I wanted to be the guy the skipper could turn to and say, listen, we need a guy who knows what he's doing to go here and do this job. I wanted that. I wanted that with my family. I wanted that with all my friends. That when they needed something, when the chips were down, they could count on me. They could point that finger at me. Who do you want to be? Do you want to be the guy that when the, when the chips are down, they can point that finger on you and they can point it and they can count on you to get the job done? That's a question. I don't have the answer for you. 
But I want you to get this. Inside a team is a very simple thing. It's very subtle. They say there's no I in team, but there is at me in team. It's subtle. It's not obvious. See, the team comes first. At me is second. But guess what? If you need somebody, do you want to be the guy they can point that finger at? Coach, point that finger at me. Buddy, you point that finger at me. Teammate, you point that finger at me and I'll deliver. Do you want to be that man? Or are you going to let your excuses, your quitting conversation get in the way of what you're truly capable of being? When the chips are down, when the odds are against you, when it seems impossible, you've got every reason to quit. Are you going to be the one that has the guts to show up? Are you going to be the one that has the guts not to quit? We'll see. We'll see. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, gentlemen. Blessed my life over a decade ago. I hope it blesses yours. Talk to you guys.